Voice of Seven Thunders. This is our installment part two yes. on the topic of the Great Reset. Yes. You are Apostle Hargrave, I'm Apostle Binion with the Church of God. And what we wanted to do was continue our discussion that we began on the Great Reset. And um, as a review, what I want to highlight here is that the Great Reset is a hijack. The, the mm -hmm. phrase that's being used by people like Klaus Schwab and the World Economic yes. Forum and other global elitists is a term that actually comes right out of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I don't mean the language verbatim, but the principle of a great reset, the idea of improving humanity, the idea yes. of a social uh, reset, that it causes there to be equality, the potential to erase poverty and crime and mm -hmm. the ability to prevent sickness and provide better healing and medicine and better communication. It's and essentially a utopia. All these things, this utopia yeah. on earth, yeah. I, want to, I want our listeners to understand, Brother Hargrave, that that is not new mm -hmm. to Church of God, that God right. from the beginning had prophesied that there'd be mm -hmm. a time of a reset that things would be, as the scripture says, wax worse and worse mm -hmm. until, until the kind of degree that restoration would be a necessity mm -hmm. in the earth. And not only have we believed this and lived this, right. we believe there's a greater measure of this coming to the people of God, and that's what we want to talk about. That's, that's right. And brother, what people may not realize if they don't know the history, that America in the past, in the beginning, the 1900s, right around that time, was presented to the world as essentially the Garden of Eden. That's right. The place to come to, and we're very thankful to be in America. <laughs> but I'm saying the idea right. of America being basically heaven, basically the equivalent of heaven, where all the Immigrants could come, and there you could find a new life. There you can find a reset. That's right. And you can find uh, these opportunities. And I think we're right there again, because now we're seeing that what was the opportunity, what was understood to be the American dream, what was understood to be this great uh, situation, is now riddled with chaos That's and right. all kinds of confusion. And That's so right. now we need another reset. And our point, as you said, is just to discover that this has long been written in the scriptures and this is not something new. It's a hijack, it's a bootleg version That's as we right. talked about. Now today we are without our audience, but that may provide us, um, or I should say that won't hinder anything that we're going to do. I think brother, we should just go, I'd like to go from Revelation 21 if we can, one through 11. Obviously, we're not going to sit here and read 11 verses, but maybe we should read and review just starting with one again because repetition is so excellent to help people to understand what we're saying. Well, and if you're picking up our, if you're picking up this podcast or this vlog at, at point number two, right, or part two, then got to go back. The, the the review is good, right, right. Um, so let, let's let's jump in. Before you do that, I thought it was to your point about America. I wanted to add this mm -hmm. question: Isn't America a Christian nation? America, that's an excellent question, first of all. America. I mean, there is the rugged American individualism that people have of lived off of and of built their fortunes on. And mm -hmm. this is the most prosperous nation in the world, the most influential nation in the world. Mm -hmm. Isn't that because the founding fathers of this country built it upon Christian principle? It's an excellent, excellent question. And uh, it's a broad question. You can actually do the whole podcast on that, yeah. <laughs> on that or the whole uh, vlog session. I would say that America certainly is presented as a Christian nation. America, generally speaking, is thought of by outsiders as a Christian nation. But some of the prosperity of America, I would say by far the most prosperity of America, is because it has been built upon the backs of essentially slaves, not necessarily just people of darker shades of skin. Right. But even some of the immigrants, if you read books like uh, Excellent, life-changing books like The Jungle. Yeah, very um, good, very good. Th things like that, it shows that America was actually essentially built upon the backs of slaves or cheap labor and abuses and oppression. And I do want to make something clear here that probably needs to be made clear over and over. We're not anti-American. The people of America and the land of America and what we have here is a wonderful land. We don't want to be anywhere else. Candace Owens in her new book, and uh, she mentions, if anybody wants to go back to Africa and renounce, and renounce your U.S. citizenship, I'll pay their way. We'll get into that another time. But I think she says that because she knows she's not going to, she's not going to empty out her account. That's Any, right. No one's going to renounce their U.S. citizenship. Right. So we're thankful to be here. But there's a difference between the people of America and the system 
into which those people have been born. And I think sometimes people can't differentiate or make that difference. And they think because you're talking about the wickedness of right. the system that you're automatically in opposition to America or the people. So the reason I'm asking is this, is to the point that you were making that mm -hmm. people have thought that America was a place where there was renewed hope, yeah, there was a chance at life, mm -hmm. the Garden of Eden concept is I would like us, I'd like our audience to know that we don't see that, we don't see America as the solution mm -hmm. to the problem. That's right. It has actually been a contributor to the problem and it's the reason why people are using terms like our, our new president-elect Joe Biden is saying, we need to heal the soul <laughs> of the nation. If of this course. is a Christian nation, mm -hmm. the soul wouldn't need to be healed. Mm -hmm. And can I, it would offer healing to the masses. That's exactly correct. We're not providing that, we're actually providing hurt and damage and dis, uh, discord among the human, human family, mm -hmm. first here, but then abroad. So I'm bringing this up because I think it's important that we talk about the fact that it's not the answer, but there is an answer, Absolutely. which is why we're going to the scriptures Absolutely. to get the answer that was given Absolutely. before the problem was presented. And can, please, were you gonna say something? Just else? that the foundation is that is the, we've quoted before many times, mm -hmm. the more sure word of prophecy. Peter yes, talks about yes. the more sure word of prophecy. There's the, 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 the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Those are foundational things in humanity that if we'll build on that, not on the American economy, oh, not on American social policy, mm -hmm. not on American politics, not on America, mm -hmm. then we'll have the answers, the solutions, and that can be done inside of America. Brother, when you say that, I'm going to highlight again, when we say not on American, people are talking about, oh, they hate America, they're anti-American. That's not We're our talking point. about the system into which the people of America have been born. and. Of course, America has to be presented as a Christian nation because in my mind, that just highlights the reason why we're even in the scriptures. Because that provides a legitimacy to the system that it doesn't Very actually good. possess. Which is our point of our, that, that, of our, that's, that's of our exactly program today is to so, show that the, 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 that the Great Reset, that concept right. is not unique exactly. to the World Economic Forum or any of mm -hmm. the global elitists. That is a concept that is Christian. Absolutely. So America presented in 1900 as the Garden of Eden to the influx of immigrants. Well, the Garden of Eden is strictly, it, it's scriptural, it's paradise. So it's presented as a Christian idea, but it's actually not a Christian idea. The Christian idea and the Word of God gives it the legitimacy to deceive the people for the length of time into or up to the point where we are today, if, if, that, if that makes sense, if totally, I'm making that clear. Totally, I think it, it's a valid point and one that we want to continue to lay as a foundation to why we think this mm -hmm. is so critical th today. So the soul of America needs healed. It's not possible that it would need healed again if it was a Truly Christian a Christian nation. That's right. Actually, the idea of a Christian nation, which comes out of the, the Judaic nation mm -hmm. that traveled in the wilderness and built mm -hmm. up the kingdom under King David and others, right. um, that is actually a type of what God wanted to do with the true Christian nation, which is the church of God. Right. Yeah. So, okay, good. let's move on. Let's get into this. Revelation yes. 21 is where we were yesterday on our, yes. on our previous post. Let's do this one here today. Revelation 21, I'll start, and I saw. Mm -hmm. So this is, of course, John the Revelator, John who received mm -hmm. what the Bible calls it the first, the first sentence in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, mm -hmm. and there was no more sea. Yes. I feel like we dealt with that well yesterday, but just by way of review, Revelation, of course, is a symbolic book, and it's talking about a new, it's not talking about the destruction of the earth in this particular circumstance. Yes, it's talking about if we can do it on, a, on an individual level, it's talking about an experience that we have, a new experience in Jesus Christ, our earth, ourselves being made new, old things passed away, behold, all things are become new, and then us being raised up together in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus with the same power that God used to raise him from the dead, being raised up together in the heavenly realm, not heaven where God dwells, That's right. but a spiritual realm. So the new heaven and the new earth is talking about an experience that we have individually, but then also a collective gathering together of God's church because his church is one. That's right. They're one people. There's one experience. There's one Jesus Christ. There's one salvation. So we're all raised up together in this new heaven and new earth. And the scriptures we read yesterday help us to understand that that 
that new heaven and new earth is called Jerusalem. But that's I don't right. want I don't want to get uh, too far ahead. I don't want to get overly far ahead. So that's just a review. Again, they'll have to uh, go Listen back to part one. Go back to part one to get the details. We gave many scriptures, but that's that's just a review. One thing we didn't do, Brother Binion. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. I don't think we dealt with that. No, we didn't deal with the sea. We jumped over that. So there was no more sea, and we spent an hour on most of verse 1. But I think it's a good foundation for us to go quickly through 10 verses or so right now. So no more sea. Uh, in brief, like we could turn to Revelation 13, for example, where it's talking about beasts, and these Coming things are very mystical. Sea. So the beast rose up out of the sea. So whatever the sea is, it is a common phraseology, a common symbol used in the book of Revelation. And so we have a beast rising up out of the sea. That's right. And also we have the sea in Revelation 16. Seven and 17. Yes, yeah, 16 and 17. So 16, there's an angel pouring out God's wrath upon, uh, right. yes, upon the sea. sea. And I'm not turning to these intentionally. I'm just making the point that sea is used throughout Revelation. Daniel chapter 2. Da uh, Daniel uh, chapter 2, yes. No, 7. Well, Daniel chapter 7 deals with the sea. Yes, it is. The great beast. The, great, the, 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 wind, the wind striving on the sea. On the sea. That's sea. right. And the, and the beast rise up out of the sea. sea. That's very good. It's the same sea. That's exactly it's right. It's dealing with the same beasts. Okay, and so this is a common symbol, common symbology used throughout the Bible. And then in Revelation 17, it helps us to know that there's a woman, Mystery Babylon, is sitting on many waters, or the sea, sea. and it tells us what the sea is. We, we should probably turn to that. Should we turn to that? Revelation that. 17. Revelation 17. I'm referring to a lot of scriptures just to let our audience know, look, this is, we're not just arbitrarily grabbing, grabbing something and saying, and okay, look, up, this no. means that. So, it's actually defined for us. The scripture so, is its own best commentary. Rev Amen. Revelation 17, 15, I want to say. Um, I'm going to read first. Uh, I want to read where it says, she sat upon many waters, verse number one. Yes. I'll just read that, then go mm -hmm. over to 15. So Revelation 17, one, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows talked with me, saying, mm -hmm. Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I want to mm -hmm. highlight something from part one, yes. that the revelation of Jesus Christ was more than just yes. something about Christ, the man who walked the shores of Galilee, whom John knew personally. I'm glad you whom said that. The disciple that Jesus loved, he leaned upon his bosom. This is the disciple that God, Jesus said to him, Behold mm -hmm. thy mother. So. This revelation encompasses not only Christ, yes. but the glory that should follow, the scripture says. Absolutely. So here we're actually including another revelation. John mm -hmm. is being shown something that John had not seen. Mm -hmm. He's seeing it in symbolic form, uh, some spiritual event happening. And that's why this book is so critical. It's so misunderstood. It really is. I was thinking as you were talking, it really is. you know, there's something that's called the millennial reign doctrine. Right now, if you have believed in that doctrine, we have thrown you in a tailspin. Of course, just by what we've said. By what we've said so yes. far, because we have actually refuted that, and with good reason. It's actually mm -hmm. a, a very false and erroneous doctrine mm -hmm. to believe it the way that people are teaching it. There mm -hmm. is a millennial reign, but yes. it's not the way that, um, you know, if you read the Tim LaHaye series of books, right. it's not that right. at all. That's a, that's a, a false doctrine. Right. All right, so John's receiving a revelation, not only of Christ himself, mm -hmm. but of the events of history, the events of humanity. Yes. He's laying out the, um, the vicissitudes of the human experience mm -hmm. from the time of Christ until the end of time. And what we're dealing with particularly is the revelation in our time, it's excellent. which is so critical. So he's laying out the history of mankind, which history is prophecy. prophecy which is, which has been fulfilled. That's right. Okay. So prophecy is something that's foretold. It's, that's not the extent of it, but it is that. Right. It's something that's foretold. And history is prophecy that has already been, been fulfilled. fulfilled. Now, th I have to say this, brother, and this is why we took so long on the, on the first time, but I have to say this. You know how they say uh, history is written by, by the, victor. the conqueror that's or right. the victor. That's right. And brother, it is true. Yes, sir. So if, if I like you. it is true, I like if you. the Catholics, you know, I know won, where you're going. or if I won this, or if the police show up somewhere, and this is no slight on the police, if the police show up somewhere, there's a shootout, the police have killed someone. Typically, what, whatever the police said is what that's happened. That's the narrative. Yeah, that is the narrative because nobody can contradict the narrative. Look, I showed up, this is what happened, this is what's going on, okay? 
And so there is a sense where, a real sense where history is written by the victor. The problem is we have not known who the victor is and the victor as Christians know is the Lord Jesus Christ. And what the revelation is as opposed to just a, a collection of mystical doctrines that never really satisfy my soul. Like, I'm, right. like I'm trying to believe what you say. I even do believe it, but there's an emptiness. There's not a connectivity That's right. uh, of the belief. What the revelation is, the revelation is the victors writing and reconciliation of the true history That's right. before, before it happened. the history ever happened, which is manifestly a reason to believe it, which is prophecy. So we are more than conquerors through him, right? Absolutely. So we are, as a Christian, if you have been born again, Absolutely. you are the victor. Absolutely. You, we own the narrative of all humanity, Yes. and that's found right here in this book. And it's not even known. And what we're discovering in the end of time is the narrative that they're promoting as their own we found this has been this, this has been documented by the for, victor for thousands of years by the victor from the very beginning and that is the beauty of the book That's of right. revelation it demystifies and we don't have every to every knee shall bow oh, brother. every tongue shall confess brother we don't have to go through all. so let's all right, so let's keep reading let's get back so you were talking so about john received a revelation that's what he's getting ready to see here yes, sir. and a part of the revelation says he saw a woman or whore mm -hmm. sitteth upon many waters. Now that's not a, the Bible is very explicit here. That's not a nice thing to say. To it, call, refer to someone refer or something someone as a whore. As that. That's right. However, this is exactly what it is in the Bible. The history of the victor in no uncertain terms calls some entity a, a whore. whore. That's All right. right. And she's sitting to our point of the sea on mm -hmm. many waters. All right, so we want to get just definition and then get Absolutely. back to Revelation 21, verse Absolutely. 15. And he saith unto me, the waters mm -hmm. which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples, peoples. and multitudes, multitudes and nations, nations and, tongues. and tongues. Jude refers to false prophets as raging waves of the, of sea, the sea, foaming out their own shape, foaming out their own raging shape. waves of the sea. So when we're talking about the sea, because the point here in Revelation 21, there's no more sea. Well, what's the sea? Well, the sea is talking about people. So is it talking about there's no more people? Well, it's a little bit, it, it bears a little bit of prophetic uh, explaining. It's not suggesting that in the end time, no more people would exist on That's the right. earth. That's right. What it is helping us to know is that these beasts, these systems of religion, including the whore at the very end, these systems of religion rose up out of, of the, the people. Sea. That's right. Okay. So from among the people, we read the scriptures, uh, second Peter yesterday, yesterday, from among the people, false religious systems and belief systems would rise that would dominate the people. And the symbol is given as a C because we're not able to fully follow the origin from the time, even in the time when it was happening, we can't fully follow the origin of these systems until such a time as there's no more sea. And the scripture is helped, the prophecy, the history written by the victor, it's simply helping us to understand that there comes a point in history where the sea is removed or the obscurity that was once in the past is removed and we can plainly, we can plainly view, see. We can plainly see. I see what's been working with the Revelation 17, 15. The peoples, the multitudes, the multitudes, the nations. the nations and the tongues. I see what's been affecting mankind, the peoples, the multitudes, the nations, the tongues. And this is giving us in Revelation 21, if we'll go back there real quickly. And and I appreciate you reading that. It just shows proof that the sea is talking about the people. And I, John, verse 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. We've dealt with that. For the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Giving us a symbolic representation that there's no more obscurity. We can see what's been affecting the people. So I'll add to that something interesting. So he says that there was, that the sea or the many waters were peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues. That's four, right? Mm -hmm. So four is a number in the Bible that represents yes. two things. Yes. Universality, like north, south, east, west, all directions, mm -hmm. you have four. It also means totality. Correct. Okay. So what we're seeing here is the waters 
represent all humanity. So in every, so this is why the revelation is so important. We've said this in some of our other yes. podcasts. It's so critical. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter where you are. That's it doesn't right. matter what your um, philosophy is. It doesn't matter what language you speak. The revelation appeals to something in the soul of humanity. That's right. Because it tells us that this sea is people, multitudes, or mm -hmm. the totality of humanity mm -hmm. that out of which these beasts arise. What the scripture is telling us is that humanity would actually begin to see the necessity mm -hmm of a new heaven and a new earth yes. because the sea is not there. In other words, that obscurity, mm -hmm. they would see, oh, there's corruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is happening right here among our own people. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not just in our country, it's in that country. There'd be this removal everywhere all at once. Brother, all at once. That so is beautiful. We, what we would look for for this fulfillment is are the is the world in an uproar mm -hmm. uh, because of the exposure that's happening in the world? And the answer is yes. The answer is manifestly yes. We can find yes. uproar everywhere. This, this pandemic, so-called, has actually mm -hmm. been a blessing in disguise. It really has been. Because been with all the turmoil and yes. the stress and the depression and the suicide and the deaths mm -hmm. and the sicknesses. And, and, and let me just say this. COVID is contagious. Yes. Not deadly. All right. All right. I, I, COVID I, I like is contagious. Saying, it's real. But it's and not it's contagious. contagious. It is not deadly. It's not dead. All right. Very good. Very good. That this actually has caused people to begin to be awakened. The sea is being removed, mm -hmm. not because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were prophesying of this just a couple years ago Absolutely. that these kinds of things were going to cause people to wake up or the sea, mm -hmm. that, that obscurity, and they would be able to look and say, mm -hmm. there's something there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's kind of like somebody who's born blind. If they all of a sudden were mirac miraculously given sight, mm -hmm. they may not recognize everything at first because they haven't done that mm -hmm. ever in their life. So we take the sea away by the preaching. Yes. So what happens? People are looking and they don't know what that is. That's they right. know something's not right. I vaccines, see that. Oh, yes. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Those vaccines, they find, it turns out that there's some major side effects from those vaccines. Mm -hmm. And we got organizations that have never been in vaccines that are now trying to create vaccines. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what are they doing in our schools? Oh, Oh, wait, 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 wait. And people see something, they just know what to do about it, brother. That's right. That's right. Thus, so, the necessity of what we're teaching. Oh, brother, it, it's to me, it's a beautiful thing. There's, there's so much to be said about it. I want to, if you allow me to back up, COVID, our statement about COVID, COVID is contagious, not deadly. So we are acknowledging that there have been some Absolutely. that die from COVID. What we're saying is the narrative that has been promoted about the deadliness of this disease and the fact that it's a pandemic, which we do not believe it's a pandemic, no, is actually a false one. Now also, this sea, if there's no more sea, we also can see, or no more people. In other words, the obscurity has gone away. We can see what's been working among the people. This also demystifies the book and it demystifies those beasts because those beasts are things that have risen up among humanity that at this point of the reading of Revelation are primarily history. We can look through history and key moments, key things, key entities, key empires that have affected the uh, history of mankind, key beliefs, and that's what the beasts are talking about. It demystifies it where we don't have to look for a dragon. There's no great red dragon in the most literal sense. That's right. It's a representative of something. There's no beast with seven heads and ten horns that we should expect to come. Comedians have had field days with things like this, yeah, waiting right. because nobody really knew what, uh, what to call it or how to explain it. But this is talking about how we're able to identify these beasts that are in this book with that which has been affecting humanity all along, number one. Number two, it also helps us to know that we don't really fully understand what's been happening that's with right. mankind that's right. until we can see at the end of time, oh, that's what's been happening. So that way it excuses your grandma. Yes, sir. I'm just saying. I like you, brother. It, it excuses your grandma because like people you, are talking about, hold on. Grandma believed that, and I know grandma was a good woman. You can't tell me. And I'm saying, hey, amen. Man, I don't have no problem. I believe your grandma likely was, a, if you say so, I take you on your word. There were a lot of good grandmothers. But it doesn't diminish what she did, and you don't have to hold to what she did. She lived in the, in the time where there was too much sea, sea that's right. or too much covering up. Where and well, she just and the fact that grandma was good yes. has nothing 
nothing uh, please. to do with you. It has nothing at all to do with you. You can't get in God's heaven on grandma. You got to be good where you were. Now, grandma, likely on, on your testimony, your mom, your dad that are now gone. And we don't want to think, well, if what you're saying is right. That means my mama went to hell. No. No. No, no, no. it doesn't mean that. No. Mama got to live in the time where she was living in. That's right. And the fact may be that if she had a brother, if all she had was a little bit of milk and some water and some cornflakes, she might have put the milk in and put, you know, put some water in, shook it up. And, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, she, did, she did the did best, best she, she could. could. But in your refrigerator, there's some milk. Now, you're going to put water in there. You're going to do the same thing mama did. Nah. So it doesn't mean that your mother or your old religious people, well, they were Baptists. You all say it doesn't mean that. It just means they did the best they could at their time. You have to live in the generation you're in. And now we're living in a time where we can see what has been affecting right. them. And if we understand it that way, we can actually make a better progression than our uh, than our forebears uh, did, our parents did, yes, sir. which is exactly what they would have wanted. Yes, sir. All right. So there was no more sea. Verse two. Yes. And I, John, saw the holy city, mm -hmm. New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, mm -hmm. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is a wonderful thing. I'm going to refer our listeners back to yesterday. Part two. Part one. Part one to get the real details about this new Jerusalem. I'm going to make the statement, but then I'm going to refer them to get the proof. And then there'll be further proof when we get down to uh, verses 10 and 11 in this podcast. The new Jerusalem is not talking about the Jerusalem overseas. It's not talking about the city over there. It's not talking about the Mediterranean. It's talking about God's church. It's not talking about heaven. It's talking about, and the reason why we know it's not talking about heaven is right in this verse, coming down from God out of heaven, out of heaven. So this is something that God placed from heaven and brought it down to earth. It reminds me of the scripture and his, his disciples said, show us an example how to pray. I'm saying, I added the word example. Show us how to pray. He said, well, just pray in one of the words, one of the phrases, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, thy will be done in, in earth, as just like in heaven. So his will is done in heaven. So Lord, help there to be some time where whatever is in heaven comes, <laughs> comes down, to, down earth. to earth and that your will can be done in earth. And it's done through the experience of salvation, which resets the individual and also the gathering together of the people of God. So this is talking about the church of God. Uh, further evidence of that, Brother Binion. She's prepared as a bride. That's right. Adorned for a husband and everyone that is uh, familiar with any kind of Christian doctrine. And I'm not turning to well, the we scriptures. Well, we could refer you to Ephesians chapter 5, for example, where, Christ, where Paul says, I'm not talking about marriage. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Christ and the church. This is a great mystery, but I'm speaking about Christ and the church, referring to husband and wife relationship. And that husband and wife relationship is intended by God on this earth to represent Christ and, and, and the church. church. That's right. Amen. So verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, this Behold, is excellent. the tabernacle of God is with men. Which is the point. This cannot be heaven. No. Actually, and this is what the Bible does often, yes. is it will actually say the same thing it just said, just a new language. <laughs> Absolutely. Just because the Lord knew that we needed that kind of a repetition. Yes. So he says, I saw Jerusalem come down from God out of heaven. Yes. And then he calls then he Jerusalem. Says, Go ahead. I saw the tabernacle of God with men. And he's talking about the, the same, very same thing. So this Jerusalem here is the tabernacle. He's also connecting it to Jerusalem was the holy city in the Old Testament time. Where and God dwelt. Where God dwelt. And the tabernacle is what Moses reared. Right. Where God dwelt. So he's just showing the progression down exactly. through time. There was a tabernacle. There was a city. Yes. Those were types and shadows yes. of what God wanted to do in the end of time, which was actually Eden. Absolutely. Eden. Eden, it, tabernacle, Jerusalem. Yes. All talking about the same place. The Absolutely. place where God dwells with his people in purity. We're not going to do it, but if we mm -hmm. remember Revelation 22, we find out that in, the, in Jerusalem is a tree. Yes. There's a river of life. It, it's the same garden There's of There's access to things that will heal and help inside of the New Jerusalem, it is the genuine, inside of the tabernacle. It is the genuine paradise. It is the genuine utopia. It is the true reset. In this life, not in heaven. this current life. Not talking life, about heaven. Right. That the, that the powers that be, the power structure, is endeavoring to the copy, best they can to, to imitate. That's right. 
And, but this is already prophesied before, which is our point. All right. So this is excellent. We went through some of this yesterday, but we're going to go through it again because it's excellent. Now so, it's going to describe what happens in this utopia. So he says, and he. Yes, I, God. I'm going to start over again. Let me just, I, I just Please. it's the word of God, brother. Please, okay. brother. And I heard a great voice out of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's another study right there. Mm -hmm. A great voice out of heaven saying, now I got to talk about it. I'm sorry. I heard a great voice out of heaven. Okay. Heaven, we've said, is not talking about God's dwelling place. It's a spiritual plane. Absolutely. Paul said, we behold the things that are not seen. He's talking yes. about that spiritual yes. realm. It's called heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ephesians chapter one talks about heavenly place. Mm -hmm. All right. So here he says, there's a voice there. Yes. If heaven is still what we said before, it's the church. It's the heavenly experience. It's the place that we've come to when mm -hmm. we're born again. Then the voice that comes out of heaven is the voice of the church. Yes. It's the testimony of the church, mm -hmm. which says, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm -hmm. So in looking for the fulfillment of this scripture, this prophecy, this is good. We are looking for a people. We're looking for people who declare the, the sound, who mm -hmm. make the declaration. God's tabernacle is with us now. Okay. So, so someone says, well, we're looking for God to say that. And the scripture makes it very clear God doesn't that say we're that. raised up together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, and this cry is coming from his people that have experienced the reset. So we can see the same voice in Revelation. Yes. Chapter number 16. I heard a great voice out of the temple. Yes. Heaven, temple, yes. Eden. They're the same Tabernacle, thing. Tabernacle, everything. Saying to the seven angels, mm -hmm. go your ways. Mm -hmm. The great commission that Jesus gave to his disciples continues down through the church age, mm -hmm. the New Testament dispensation, yes, sir. which proclaims to its ministry. Yes, sir. It's not just the minister speaking. We often say that preaching is not a preaching is a team exercise. Mm -hmm. Preaching is something that requires both the body and its ministry. And here we see in Revelation 16, the church saying to its ministers, yes. go with the okay. message, preach the message. We're behind you. It's the same thing as the cloud of witnesses. No. I hope we're not losing the audience. No, no brother, but they have their Bibles and, and they're reading the Bible. If they're listening to this, they are reading their Bibles or at least they have an interest. Right. Okay. So brother, I do want to say something. This this is the voice of God's people, yes, the church. Sir. I want to turn to, I have to turn to Revelation 22, 17. Because yes, this tabernacle is the bride, is Jerusalem, is the temple, is Eden. It's all symbolic language. Yes. Revelation yes. 22, 17. Say? Read it. It says, and the spirit, which is God himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the bride, which is his, bride. which is his bride, which his is church, what we just talked which about, is what we just a read. bride adorned for her husband, the spirit and the bride say, say come. come, come where? Come Obviously, to the come to the tabernacle to the that tabernacle. came down out of heaven so that you can be reset in the truest sense, in the only true sense of reset. Now, what we're doing, what we are this attempting is a beautiful to do thing is here. a beautiful thing Yes, because the Bible is so clear. Yes. What we are trying to do is help people not to be so triggered. That's right. When we say, mm -hmm. come here. Right. Somebody prophetically mm -hmm. has to fulfill that right. promise that declares, come. Can I, can I say something else? Because Please. again, if, if they're here, if you have gotten this far and listen to one, you are either a, a great enemy or almost convinced, or this is already in your heart, it's over. There's no, like there's, there's nothing else. But inside of the children of God, there is this cry that says come because they know because we're not Jesus himself. No. OK. They know the Jesus that has produced in them the cry that says come. There's a longing. There That's must right. be something. Right. There has to be. So this is not an offense to anyone that is honest. And the scripture is plainly prophesied that someone, some people would have this understanding would have, and this was prophesied thousands of years. We weren't here, brother, thousands of years. Some people will have this understanding and they will say, come, come. to this place where God is, not in their own uh, braggadocious uplifted false humility way or proud way in a bad way, which is what has been People have been classically conditioned to yes. think that to make this kind of a declaration somehow makes you proud or 
uh, self-conceited or self-centered. Yes. Not at all. It's actually humility. Total humility. Because as we're when saying, when you acknowledge yes. who you are in God, that is the depth of humility. That is humility. And additionally, knowing that we're not God, saying you, you need to come here. I know I'm not God. I live with me. I know I'm abundantly human. And it still takes some humility to say, look, God has done this, and He's done this not just for us. It's a beautiful thing. There's no real. There's no real reason to even get upset. It's not like the people are saying, hey, we're above everything, we're holier than thou, and y'all just missed out. We're saying, look, God has reset. Come. come. Like, just come here. You're a part of us. Come You're one with us. Come to the great us. reset. Absolutely. All right? Absolutely. So, and I heard a great voice, verse 3, out of yes. heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Yes, brother. And he, now we're yes. going to talk about what it looks like to be inside of this great reset, mm -hmm. this new Jerusalem, this new earth. Yes. He will dwell with them. Yes. And they shall be his people. Mm -hmm. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. So, so God and his people are inseparable, not just in heaven, but on earth. He's living in them, moving in them, dwelling with them. They speak, but he's speaking. It's their voice and it's his voice and it's the spirit and the bride saying, come. That's so right. you see a connection That's right. as husband and wife. They twain become one. Shall be one. That's right. Shall be one. That's right. All right. Verse four. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is tremendous. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Neither sorrow. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Yes. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, let me set you Please. up with a question. Please. This sounds like heaven. Brother, honestly. I Why? Have to would this not be heaven? That's what I know that's what we're going to teach. It, it's, it's a good but question. But why is this not talking about it's heaven? It's a good question. And let me do justice. Let me do justice to the individuals that believe it's heaven. You have intelligence if you believe and have believed that this is heaven. A place of no more tears, a place where there's no, no more death. death, no sorrow, no crying, no, no more no pain. pain. The former things are all passed away. You are absolutely intelligent to believe this is heaven. That's right. This in context is not, and I'm defending them. This in context we're saying is not talking about heaven, our final resting place. But I'm going to do you justice and say it comes from heaven. And it is of the same essence yes, sir. as the final resting yes, place. Sir. And so when it's talking about there'll be no more tears, it's not saying that you'll never cry again. You might weep tears of joy or you might break your arm. That's right. <laughs> I mean, because you're not in heaven. So it's not talking about that. It's talking about the bemoaning, sorrowful weeping of the chaos, the confusion, the lack of understanding, the not knowing my the place. The depression. The depression. The attempts not of suicide. Not seeing. The alcoholism. Yes, brother. The Looking for drugs to, the divorce, to escape your mind, the all divorce, kinds of, the, the racism, home, the racism, oh, brother, the, the everything, prejudice, the, everything, the violence, brother, all that the is decadence. Gone. When you've come, this is why we declare. This is why the voice saying, "Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm -hmm. God is here, yes, in a manifest way." So don't think these people, these pe some aren't these people. They think they're the tabernacle. No, don't think like that. Think that they're saying, "Come here, come here." Like it's like, "Come, <laughs> no, come. We have found something." Well, this has to be heaven. There's no more crying. It is of the same heavenly, exact heavenly essence. Essence, yes, sir. Except it dropped out of heaven. On to the earth. I could preach about it, but it's not preaching time. All right. <laughs> so let's. Uh, the former things are passed away. Yes, sir. The reset. The former things. It doesn't mean, again, we're on earth. It just means how the confusion that this earth has produced in us and all of the things we mentioned at all the, the in total, not just in part. It doesn't say abortion is no more. It doesn't say racism is no more. It doesn't say divorce is no more. That's right. It's not talking about individual things, but rather it's talking about a, a ushering in an ushering in of a new system. Well, brother, it's talking about a new system 
inside y yes. of the systems. Yes, yes, of this, yes. Of this earth. Uh, of this earth. So in, what in we're the, saying in the is world. That's exactly the, correct. The message of Revelation 18 is come out of her. Yes. What's her? It's that woman that it's sits the woman on the many waters. Exactly. So as the sea has been cleared away, there's no more sea. Mm -hmm. While that's being exposed, and this is the problem that people are facing today, things are getting exposed. Yes, no more sea. But what do we do about it? That's the issue. Right. And that's why this vacuum that has been created by the sea being removed. Yes. That causes people to say, I see stuff. Yes. That's why the World Economic Forum and other global elitists can say, the Great Reset. Yes. And people be tempted to look for the promises mm -hmm. that are there. And what we're saying is that is a trap. Exactly. If you go to that, you'll just find more weeping, more sorrow, more tears. But while that is going on in the world, while there's still going to be violence, mm -hmm. racism, prejudice, yes. inside of the tabernacle, the inside city. of the city, the of New refuge. Jerusalem, yes. inside of heaven on earth, yes. there are people in there who are living the where reset. there is no prejudice, there is no racism, there is no oppression, Brother. there is no crying, there is no dying on in this, sin. On this the greater earth. death is the death of sin, not the death of on the this body. Earth. That's right. The, 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 the second death is going to come, mm -hmm. but the first one is the one you got to watch out for. That's correct. And so the systems of men are essentially promising through this reset what we have just read, and the reason why we know that what they're promising now, which has now just come up, they're actually Johnny come lately. Yes, sir. That John, John gave the revelation. Two thousand years ago. His name is John, the apostle. Their name's Johnny. Yes, sir. Johnny come, come lately. lately. Yeah, Johnny come lately. Come lately. So, so what happens is this is already written, and they're promising. They're they're promising falsely. The systems of this world are promising falsely what we have just read that was prophesied thousands of years ago. Brother, you're talking about 2,000 years ago, yes, approximately. Yes, 2,000 years ago, this was prophesied. And so the systems of the world are promising that. We're saying they can't deliver it, but there is this reset. The people inside of the reset are telling others, come. And that is inside. I, brother, we believe with all of our hearts. We say some tremendous things. Yes, brother. We believe with all our hearts. People will come to this people will come to us. Well, why should they come to you? Because it's not about us. We've just read the because prophecy. Because they're going to come in spite of us. Yes. If whether you and I are here tomorrow Brother, it doesn't or not even matter. No because bearing. the prophecy, the prophecy says, says somebody's coming. People are going to come to this. Somebody's reset. coming. They're going to come to the reset. Somebody's coming. And apparently there were already some people that were there. They were already there. And they were saying, look, they weren't, they weren't bragging, hey, look, we got, we got everything. They're saying, look, come, come, all nations, come. And America, the system, I'm not talking about people. I'm not talking about the beautiful cornfields and the beautiful hills and the mountains and the rivers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the system that has overshadowed and abused the beautiful people of America and the world is promising to care for the huddled masses when the promise of care for the huddled masses has been documented by the victor from the beginning of time all the way back to the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.15. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. we need to keep reading. All right, verse number five. Yes. I, well, I just want to reread, for the mm -hmm. former things mm -hmm. are passed away. Those things that plagued our mind, mm -hmm. the conditioning that we received the false doctrine that we lived under yes. that caused, you talked about earlier, people having in their soul this knowledge, this desire, yes. but not knowing how to see it come to pass. It's not mm -hmm. tangible. Yes. That's passed away mm -hmm. according to this prophecy. Yes, brother. Verse five, and he that sat upon the throne, there's no doubt who that is, said, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at what he says. <laughs> Now he's talking. He's, this is the spirit and the bride. Yes. Look at what he says. He says, behold, yes. I make all things new. Oh, brother, I said, I said it. I said it. The great reset comes right out of here. What they are, what are, what, what they are propagating mm -hmm. is nothing more than building off of Christian principle. It's the same thing that the Jewish hierarchy, the elites in the yes, time of yes, Christ yes, did. Yes. They knew the prophecy. That's right. And they used that to justify themselves mm -hmm. in destroying the Christ. We even have Gamaliel said, it's good that one man died for the, <laughs> for the nation. Didn't, it was a Gamaliel that said that. Am I um, saying that right? Or was it the high no, priest? No, I, don't, I think priest. it was the high priest that said that. I think it was the high priest that yes. said that. It's good that one man mm -hmm. died for the nation. How did he know that? Mm, mm, How did he know that? He meant it for bad. He did. But the Lord turned it for good. 
He did. So here we have God sitting on the throne saying, behold, I make all things new. That is a reset. Now, brother, this also, this point has to be inserted here. It is not for us alone, arbitrarily of our own authority to suggest anything, even what we're saying here in this podcast. It is for God to say, and we're, that we're reading the prophecy. Mm -hmm. It is for God to say, I'm doing this. My people echo what I say, but I'm doing this right. and I'm working in them. And this highlights, this highlights a point that I think is very important. The power structure, the powers that be, are taking the position, the yes, bold brother. position yes, of God. They do not possess the ability to reset. God said, he, he's not just saying, behold, I make all things new. He's saying, behold, at the end of time, I see him finally at last. He's saying, I'm making this new. Yes, brother. I know what they're saying, yes, brother. but I'm the one that's doing it. And anything else, anything else is a gross usurpation of authority that does not belong to them. It belongs to God and God alone. It doesn't belong to you, me, or any man alone. It belongs to God alone and to whomsoever he reveals and gives it to. I was thinking about how God is the one that's going to do this. So in Revelation yes. 17, mm -hmm. I believe it says, for God, verse 17, for God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. Yes. And that's talking about the destruction, the implosion of all false systems. And that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing is the systems and of this knows world that. <laughs> is imploding and people feel that, they know that. What I want to highlight here is this, mm -hmm. is that that is th this, this, the, the, the so-called use of the term, the great reset, comes from God forcing yes. their hand. Yes. God is putting it in their heart to destroy the system yes. for people to be exposed by the sea being removed. There's an exposure that's happening. God's put it in their hearts to fight against these systems and to expose these systems. God's doing that. In Revelation 20, and I know there's more we could talk about here, but in mm -hmm. Revelation 20, I believe it's verse number nine. Uh, yes, verse number nine, we see the same systems of evil. We see mm -hmm. the beast Gog and Magog, excuse me, the dragon Gog and Magog mm -hmm. compassing the camp of the saints. And while they're compassing, what comes down from out of heaven? Fire comes Fire down from God out of heaven. Fire comes down from God mm -hmm. out of heaven. God and, has reserved something. Let me tell you something about yeah, God. Yes. God started this thing. Yes. He's going to end it. Brother, fire. With or without humanity. God did not need us to start the world. God didn't. He spoke us into existence. God is going to tie this thing up. He's going to blow the last trump. He's going to call people into eternity. He's going to lay the last judgment. And we just see that same thing. The pattern mm -hmm. is set. In the preliminary judgment. That's correct. God is saying, behold. I, not you, mm. whether we decide to or not. We mm. can walk away today, Brother Steve, mm. go back to the world that we came from, go back to the night. And this will still be true. And this is going to be true with us. And it's us. happening while we walk away. While we walk away. And that's why we need to not walk away from yes, what God sir. says. <laughs> Brother, he said, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And what else came out of heaven is Jerusalem came down from out of All heaven. Right. Really, the, really, the city, the structure, the reset, the beauties of what we have read and what God has done when he says, I make all things new, are themselves a manifest judgment upon the systems of this world and upon the men that have propagated the errors of the systems of this world because they are unable to produce what God has produced yes, sir. that we're reading. I make all things new. And he said unto me, right, for Verse these six. words are true and faithful. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, it is done. Thank the Lord. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life yes. freely. Uh -huh. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Yes. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Overcometh what? In brief, overcometh the very, actually, verse 8 is going to help us. All right. It's going to help us know what, what the overcoming is. But the fearful. Fearful. And unbelieving. Overcome fear, overcome unbelief. And the abominable. Overcome the abominations and, that this system produces. And murderers. Yes. Both physical and spiritual. Yes. And whoremongers. Whoremongers. Both spiritual and physical. Yes, brother. And sorcerers. Mm -hmm. And idolaters. Yes. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is 
That's the, the second, death. second death. And so there's an overcoming. Whoever overcomes shall inherit all things. What he's saying is you're going to inherit the city. You're going to inherit the people of the city. You're going to inherit everything that the city has. Plus, ultimately, this, that city is not just going to stay on earth. <laughs> that city ultimately is going to be connected with its essence of where it came from in a final, lasting, right. heavenly That's rest right. for the people of God. I like what you said earlier. He says it here. I will be his God. Yes. The attempt of the kings of this earth to create what they're calling the Great Reset is actually an attempt for them to preempt the God mm -hmm. and make themselves, little g, gods. They want That's to right. be the providers. There's actually, the Great Reset is nothing more than socialism with some communism mixed in Th there. That's right. They want to be your providers. They want yes. to be the deciders. They want to decide whether or not you get a vaccine. They want yes. to decide whether or not you can cross state lines. And they are they want deciding. To decide whether or not you get to fly to this other country. They're or not. playing God. They're going to get to decide if the infection that is rising, your, your temperature is rising, mm -hmm. whether that's a, um, a sickness or not. Mm -hmm. They want to decide which medications that you get. They would decide which doctors you see. That is making man God over mankind. Brother, please, you were going to say no. something else. If I can insert this, this is not a flexing of the muscles. I mean, you could think of it that way, a flexing of the muscles of the power structure. Oh, they just, look, they can tell you to stay inside. They can make you wear a mask. You can't even go into the store. You can't cross state lines. You have to get a vaccine to get on a plane. You have to get a vaccine to even do this. You got to quarantine. Yeah, it, it's not really so much a flexing. Oh, sure, they're exerting some power. But I want you to think of it in different terms. I want our listeners to think of it in different terms. It is actually a desperate attempt from people that know they are losing control. That's right. And they don't want you to, they don't want you to, they're not presented that way. They're not losing control, they're making me, no. There is a rebellion yes, that is rising inside of individuals all of, in, through this country, America, and in the world, where the people, they just don't know where to put their rebellion. That's they right. don't know what to That's do right. with That's it. That's right. They don't know where to place it, and they don't know where the origin of the rebellion comes from. And the essence of what they're rebelling against and what they're feeling, it comes from God, because God God is rising up and saying, no, I'm doing this. That's right. And this reset, in my understanding, is a last ditch effort of a desperate power structure yes, sir. and rulers of darkness that are desperate to keep the people segregated, keep them apart, cause divisions. And God says, in the middle of all that, I'm making a city, I'm making all things new and people, I'm going to beckon That's people right. to come. So out of that rebellion, if you want to get away from God's yes. um, Gates or God Bezos or yes. God Zuckerberg or yes. God Rockefeller, uh, or, Rockefeller yeah, yeah, or God uh, Rothschild or yes. God, whatever, you want out of that, there's a true God, there's a true city inside of the world yes. that you can come to where he has made all things new it's and a beautiful thing. you can inherit all of the benefits of this new earth if you won't be fearful, It's a beautiful thing. a murderer, a whoremonger, a sorcerer, an idolater, and a liar. One of the things, uh, I believe this is listed in order uh, and all of it is important, but the first thing is listed I think is of note, fearful. There are people that are just scared. Yes, brother. And the system, the wicked system that is claiming to reset, is actually promoting this fear. I can't, people have lost their businesses. They've shut down their businesses and lost their businesses simply for fear. Yes, brother. I'm afraid, yes, to, brother. I'm afraid to not wear a mask because I might die. I'm afraid to not, I'm afraid to come out of my house and That's just rebel. I'm good. afraid to protest. They said I can't. I'm actually afraid. I'm afraid of getting a ticket. I'm afraid. I'm afraid you're going to, I'm afraid to get in trouble. And what this is saying is there's a time and a place where that fear doesn't exist. And you can't get to that place unless you overcome your fear. fearfulness unbelief. and unbelief yes, and all the wickedness, the whoremongering, etc., the lying, the adultery. All very right. good. Very good. So, brother. Verse 9. Uh, 9 through 11, and then I think this will be a good foundation upon which people can know what this is talking Yes, sir. About. All right. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which yes. had the seven vials full, the la seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. 
Just two things I'll say about this in brief. Number one, angel is not always talking about an angel such as Gabriel. Mm -hmm. um, angel in the original language, if you Simply have... Simply means... It, it means messenger. Sometimes angel is a good messenger. Sometimes it's a bad messenger. Sometimes it's a heavenly angel That's with right. wings that flies That's like right. Gabriel. That's right. And then sometimes it's the Apostle Paul that says, you received me as an angel. As an angel. That's right. And so it's very important to know that that's the first point. Secondly, and I won't get into all this, this angel, and you can have a whole session on who the angel is and how, how we determine that. The point that we want to make for the case of this podcast is saying, come hither, I'll show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. The bride, the Lamb's wife, as we have learned, is the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven because she's prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. It's the tabernacle. It's Eden. It's the church. It is the bride of Christ. And here this angel is going to now elaborate and say, now let me, t let me show you a little bit more about this bride, which is what we want, the great reset. All right. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Again, this is a revelation. This is a revelation. Whew. You cannot see this physically. Mm -hmm. There is a literal interpretation, but you don't, this is not something to look at with your naked eye. You've got mm -hmm. to look beyond and see the things which cannot be seen. Yes, sir. So are you getting Romans 14? I am not, but uh, maybe you can get that. I'm getting. I'm in Hebrews. Okay. But, okay. But please keep. Please keep going. Well, just at the the, the kingdom. Uh, maybe it's not even 14. Maybe it's um, that the kingdom of heaven is not meat nor drink. Okay. It's now, righteous not, peace. Now that's the. I know what the, the text, but the the reference right now is escaping me on the spot. Seems like it was Romans. Uh, Read what you have. Let me get oh, it. Oh, okay. While well, you're getting it. I'm going to take advantage uh, of technology. Well, I, I was just going to, yeah, that's what I did earlier, brother. If the camera saw me, I was in there. I was just typing in my concordance. Okay, Revelation chapter 21, verse 10. I'm going to read this. And he carried me away in the spirit. Where? Now, he's going to show him the bride, the lamb's wife. He carried me away in the spirit, Revelation 21, 10, to a great and high mountain. Well, I thought you were going to show me the bride. Mm -hmm. And now he shows him a mountain. And showed me that great city. Well, I thought you were going to show me the bride. Great city. Mm -hmm. The holy Jerusalem, again, descending out of heaven from God. You have your text? I do. Read, read that. And it's just quick. I was right. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, mm -hmm. but righteousness and peace and joy Amen. in the Holy Ghost. So when he Amen. says he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, I want to show you, say that when he said he carried me away, yes. he was trying to say, this is something that has to be revealed to you. Yes, it's the now, revelation the of Jesus time, Christ. Church of God saints used to say, I want to thank God for the day that I received a revelation yes. of the church. I saw the That's church. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I saw something that was revealed to me. This is mm -hmm. John. Mm -hmm. John, who knew Christ. Yes. John, who was an apostle to the seven churches. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. There you and go. this is the revelation that you have to get in order to be reset. This book will save your life. Yes, sir. This book will save your life. And <laughs> the revelation of what new, the, That's a new concept. Yeah, brother. The, re <laughs> the revelation of what this is talking about will open your eyes to realms, new dimensions of things you never saw before. And you will shout, brother, it won't matter. It, nothing will matter. And then you'll be like, I got it. The reset. I got it. So, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain. I want to say too, uh, well, let's keep going. And he showed me that great city. Yes. The new, holy Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem. Descending out of heaven from God. Same language. Now, now brother, it's the same language. Now, hold your, hold your place here. Put, put your fingers there so you can go back and forth and go to Hebrews. All right. Chapter 12. I thought so. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12. Yes, sir. What do you have and there? And verse number 22. Mm -hmm. This is the, now we believe Apostle Paul, you know, wrote the, book of wrote the book of Hebrews. If you don't believe that, Lord bless you. The book of Hebrews is written. I believe it's Apostle Paul. No problem. No need to argue. I'll go with whatever you say. Let's just read what it says. Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come. Yes. Unto Mount Zion. Unto Mount Zion. Hold on. And he can, now, I'm, now hold your place there. I'm going back to Revelation 21, 10. You read that. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. I'll read 22. Mm -hmm. Unto the city of the living God. Revelation 21 and 10. And showed me that great city. Oh, look at that. So we got mountain and city. Okay, go ahead. The heavenly Jerusalem, Hebrew it, says. In Revelation 21, 10, it says, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. And the apostle Paul, the writer of Hebrews, is simply saying, you have come to that place. This is in the primitive Christianity. This is the beginning of Christianity. 
Paul is saying, referring to the saints of the Hebrew congregation. Yes. Brother. So he, he said, you are, you have You're come. already there. You're at Mount Zion. You're at the holy city. You're at the heavenly Jerusalem. You are there at that time. Well, where did it go? He also said, the same apostle, there'll be a falling away. There'll be a falling away first. So there has been a falling away from that glorious understanding, from that glorious position. It's become obscure what the church even is. And the book of Revelation has, uh, in the end of time, removed the sea and helped us to see exactly what has been happening with mankind until at the very end, that same glorious city, bride, tabernacle, mountain comes back out of heaven from God on the earth with men in the great reset. And that's what this is talking about. So we have called that among our people the restoration. We've called it the restoration. And one thing, I, one last thing I want to say, and I think we're almost done. Restoration of what? Restoration of what the Apostle Paul just said. You, they came there at that time. If they could come there, yeah, brother. then it's not a stretch for us to declare yes. that the tabernacle of God is with men. He's yes. talking the same language. You almost can He's say. Not say we're, not, we're not saying anything different yes. than to say the heavenly Jerusalem has descended, y'all. Yes, you almost can say ha, has come. Uh, I saw the heavenly Jerusalem, Jerusalem come down from God out of heaven, you almost can say again, right, restored, right. I saw what was in the Acts of the Apostles. I saw what the Hebrew writer said, what really no Christian has ever seen. My father asked me one time, brother, he said, well, where's the church in Acts then? My dad, he's demonstrative. He's looking at me, he said, well, where's the church in Acts then? Where's it at? And my father's passed away. But brother, I could be one of those people that say, and the spirit and the bride say, come. come. I, I know where it is. Oh, you just think it's where you are. This was prophesied. I don't think, I don't think it's where I am. I'm telling you, there's something more sure than what I think. That's right. I don't want to just think. That's right. I want to know what this says. I want to be there. And the proof that is that is that it's not some kind of cultish uh, drink the Kool-Aid type thing no. and say, look, come, come to the come city on. of love. I want to, let me, I got to, I got to say something. We don't look like people that would drink Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'm just saying, brother. I'm just saying. You're right. We don't even look like no, people brother. that would drink some Kool-Aid. No, we don't even look, and I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm not abusing anybody. I'm just simply saying, I don't believe that you can listen to what we're saying and say, them some yeah, them, 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 some, them some cool. Yeah, they they nah. just in a crazy cult. If we're in a crazy cult, we got a whole lot of scriptures that have been witnessing. If you if you made it this far, a whole lot of scriptures have been witnessing to your soul. Last thing I want to say, this bride was shown. All this was shown to John by one of the angels. Yes, brother. And whatever and whoever that angel is must be outstanding to have this end time understanding. So you see the connection between John, who I'll say without explanation, got to leave something for the people, is an angel. That's right. And he sees another, another end angel. time angel that shows him in the where spirit. you came in the spirit. There's going to be the same thing in the end of time, someone in your position that can show you and show the people the great reset and where the world can come to and gather to. And Brother Binion, we believe there will not be a few gathering. There will be a lot of That's people right. together. That's right. Amen. I'll just eat, end it with reading verse number 11. And yes, having sir. the glory of God, still describing this lamb's yes. wife, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even a jasper stone clear as crystal. Amen. Verse 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. 12 We can keep going and not. We're about to get into something, brother. We better stop because we won't stop if we don't yes, stop. Yes, yes, yes. So you've been listening to the Voice of Seven Thunders podcast of the Church of God. We made this available. You can find this on our YouTube channel, Church of God. We have been enjoying this time with you. If you have questions, we'd love to hear from you. You can send those to editor at thegospeltrumpet.com. Again, editor at thegospeltrumpet.com. For Brother Stephen Hargrave, I'm Brother Ernest Binion. May the Lord bless you.